everyone this is three questions with lisa and shauna there we go music you're not ready for this so i've actually known lisa and shauna for i don't know geez it seems like several years it's for sure several years it's at least two or three right so we had worked together we have learned a lot together so uh i actually asked them both and they're both uh they're both in my uh pln 41a class on uh but they're basically taught me more than i ever taught them in that class so uh they, they're both incredible writers both incredible thinkers so i'm really glad that you could spend some time with me today Thank Thanks. you for having us. That was that was quite an introduction. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I don't know that we can follow that now. I know. No, well, no. I can hear. I'll just there we go. That's it. Podcast is over. Done. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, so that's the shortest podcast ever. There you go. All right. Got it. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so thanks for thanks for taking time on your day. I know you're both busy. I'm actually like a little sad that you've you've separated into because you work together and now you're in different places, right? Is that true? Yeah. Yes, I'm sad about that too. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, it's like a little reunion that we're having right now. So, hey, so we're gonna start off with three questions here today. So, uh, we could like to split this one up and ask uh, which who want to do the teacher one. And Lisa was pretty excited about this. So, Lisa, yeah. when you think about a teacher who inspired you in your career, uh, who's someone you think of and why? I think of my high school piano teacher uh, because I wasn't sure. Um, I mean, I liked playing the piano. I wasn't sure if it was something I wanted to do with my life necessarily. Um, but she really encouraged me to like take the next step and start taking my own piano students on. And so I did not feel confident in my abilities to do that. It was, I was just graduating high school, getting ready to move to college. And she had so many people asking her for lessons. And she was like, Lisa, you just just take some lessons for this summer. And I was like, I, I just don't think I can. And she said, Lisa, if you love them, they will learn. That's all you have to do. You have to love them. And so from then on, like I've just used that phrase to model my career. It's just been how I approach teaching and learning all the time. So that is a shout out to Ruby Jean Bellis. Ruby Jean Ellis. <laughs> oh, shout out. okay so i got okay i don't i'm like i'm gonna tell something super embarrassing right now i've okay. never shared this publicly wow <laughs> and there is it's actually weird because i'm like there's something that was said in a podcast i just recorded that i almost said it and i was like no i'm not gonna do it but i feel like that i've thought of it twice so i actually took piano lessons when i was a kid okay i love piano and probably one of my biggest regrets is i did not stick with piano now I'll like play stuff here and there. And so the reason, the reason I dropped out of piano, this has nothing to do with three questions. Okay. Was I, I was a big eater when I was a kid. Right. And one of my favorite things was these sour cream. I know this is like, what does this have to do with piano? So there's these like sour cream and I they weren't like, they're like, I need, they're like shaped like onion rings. I think they kind of have something like this and they like, they make me sick when I see them. And there's a reason I was like walking out of a, a convenience store and I opened them. And you know, I'm a kid who's got like two bucks every time, right? Like I got enough for these, these chips and I opened them. They fell all over the ground and I'm not talking like, you know, like clean floor, like five second row, like the ground, like with dirt and like cigarette buds. And I was like, I'm not going to get another pack. So I just started eating them Gotta do off it. the ground. And then I went to piano and I puked all over my piano teacher's <laughs> piano and I never went back. <laughs> That is a true story. <laughs> that well, is so I, epic. Yeah, yeah. I can see why you might want to go I puked all over my piano teacher's piano. After that, I've never been able to eat those things again. And uh, I never took piano lessons ever again. again. After two years, I was like, so, I was so embarrassed. And then she's like, what, how, why do you think you're sick? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and Lisa, how would you have loved a student through that? Yeah, yeah, how would you exactly? <laughs> I will tell you what, it is somebody told me I should write some memoirs. I I never had anybody puke on the piano, but I've had sessions where like kids yeah. have fallen off the bench and then cried and couldn't go right. on, or you know, just different things like that. Right. And if you fall off a bench, if you fall off a bench, you can come back from that. Puking on the <laughs> piano. Not, like not because you're like just sick for like no like you know you're just sick that day but like you did you something to make yourself sick. disgustingly sick so yeah that's mm -hmm. a true story there you go so little, little aren't you glad that you agreed <laughs> to this know. podcast today that's where that went. 
No, I'm yeah, gonna give a I shout out to my piano teacher for not embarrassing me. She was awesome too, and I felt I feel horrible to this day. So if you're listening, I apologize. So <laughs> that's why I puked that day. Anyway, so oh, all right, so administrator, okay, Shauna, and I know both of you. You know, you work at you know, I don't know if you work at central office anymore. Like you kind of, it gets kind of like a you kind of work central office. I know you work with a an IU. Um, but you've obviously worked with a ton of administrators. We've had lots of conversations about that. So when you think about an administrator, who's somebody you think of and why? Um, it would be actually the um, director of our division when I had my first job. So I, my very first teaching job was at the IU. And um, we have different divisions. And, and the, the director of all the special ed division, uh, her name was Barb Chubb. And... She was just so amazing because I felt like she really got to know me. And so, you know, the IU has grown since then. I don't, I don't really remember how many people, but, you know, several, probably a couple hundred to hundred people. Um, and I remember walking into, like, one of our big staff days. Where everyone was there. Was just, and she was walking out the door as that I was walking in, and she stopped. And she was like, Shauna, how are you? And I was like, oh, my gosh, you know my name? Like, there's right. all these people here. I am brand new, like brand new. And she stopped and talked to me. And every time I saw her, she would just stop and say, how you doing? And ask me about stuff. Right. I, had, I had my son two years after I started at the IU. And she was like, how's Brooks? And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, she even remembers his name. All these people that she right. supervises. Um, and she was just – like the one of the most level-headed, um, you know, kind of calm, cool, and collected administrators. Or um, she wasn't my direct supervisor. She was actually my direct supervisor. Yep. And just the fact that she knew me and she talked to me and she was just so personable and she really cared about, right. you know, how I was doing both at my job because she would ask me about that those things too, but she would also ask me about like personal life, and, you know, my family and and she just really cared about me yep. as a person. That I always remembered that. And, you know, every time anyone asked me a similar question, I'm like, yep, it's fine. Well, you know, do you know what you know what's funny is that like I so I, I remember two divisions I worked in. And one division I was in for five years and never ever met my superintendent. They would not know me from a hole in the ground. And then the other one, I met the superintendents. Um, not this, just the superintendent, associate superintendent, deputy superintendent on the very first day. And they knew my name and the feeling, the difference in feeling there between the two was so significant. Right. And I actually felt like I had a connection, right? Like it was, you know, the, I always make little jokes about what I call the superintendent entourage, like superintendent board members walking in totally, you know, it's more like a photo op than it actually is a connection. And it's just kind of, I, I hate it. And it's like, where did we lose that connection? Where did we lose that? Where, right. you know, we were in here for kids, we we're in here for people. And then we got so, you know, kind of stuck on the politics and the outside and the like, don't look me in the eye kind of mentality. Right. And it's just, there's, there's a significant difference. And so I just, you know, I hope, and so I'm going to give a big shout out. For, not only is it Barb, did you say Barb Chubb? Is that the name? Barb Chubb, yep. Barb Chubb, but all the superintendents who go to their way to make those connections, right? In in big districts and small districts. And a lot of times I know that notice the bigger the district, the more disconnected superintendents become. Whereas there's there's so many different ways that you can connect. Now I understand it's harder to get around, but there's things like social media, there's ways you can connect, like in really authentic ways. And I actually remember one of my superintendents at like it was like a Friday night, and I was, I don't even know why I'm up. But I saw um, someone from my staff posted something they did on Twitter. The superintendent, like at eleven fifty p.m., like responded, said, "Oh, I love this on a Friday night." And like eleven fifty one, the teacher was like, "Oh my god, thank you so much!" Right? And it was like that connection, and it was just like something really powerful there to see that. And you, I just like this is what I envisioned: the this, the teacher is asleep. Or like going to bed, gets notifications like what, and like sees that connection, excited, right? Because they felt validated by the superintendent. So even though they probably, you know, because of the the sheer size of our district, they went out of their way to connect in an avenue that we actually have access to. So that, that says a lot. And so I'm going to ask you this, both this last question. We'll start with Lisa. You you both are just incredible educators, uh, and thanks for like sitting through with me after my puke story because it would have been could have been easily 
early exit to this podcast. But you go back and you look at, you know, all the things that you've learned in your career. Lisa, you can start. What advice would you give to your first year teacher self? I would give myself the advice to relax <laughs> and enjoy um, just being with the kids because right. it was so was so much pressure to like do everything just right, but it will be okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Shauna, how about you? That's good enough advice? Okay. That's, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I would say um, probably just soak in all of the the wisdom from the people around you. Right. Like I feel like there's so many things to learn your first year and, and you think you're ready and then you get into your first job and you're not as ready as you, re you really thought you were. Right. And so you're focusing on like more technical aspects of the job and then, but you still have all these people around you who you maybe have been doing it for a long time or maybe mm -hmm. haven't, but they're just amazing. And so, you know, just take the time to get to know your colleagues and to learn from them and to listen to them and take their, you know, listen to their advice and make it your own, but still just mm -hmm. soak all that. Yeah. And I think for both of you, I, I would kind of sum up what you both just said is like, just kind of slow down and appreciate it. Right. Like when you first start, you're like, wow, like I, I don't know if I'm going to make 30 years. Right. And like kind of seems like a long time away. And then all of a sudden you're, you're 20 years in, you're like, what happened? Right. And I think, exactly what your, happens. <laughs> right. And I think part of it is that just kind of like appreciating every moment, trying to like slow down things. Right. And just, just appreciating your, your students, your colleagues, all that they benefit because it goes by really quick. Right. And I think, you know, this is good advice. Uh, as a, I'm, I'm glad that I'm an older parent that I started having kids. Well, I didn't have them, but started having kids at an older age because I've learned some of those mistakes um, and try to apply them as parents. So uh, it, it's awesome just to sit down and talk to you. I, I love catching up with both of you. So I think selfishly, I wanted to do this podcast just so I can kind of reconnect with you both because I, I appreciate you uh, both so much. But uh, for anyone who's listening, connect with Lisa and Shauna. You can see their Twitter handles uh, in the description down below. Lisa, Shauna, thanks so much for being on the podcast today. Thanks for, uh, I actually, I know that you know me well enough that it's like, that's kind of a surprising story, but not surprising from George, right? Like, <laughs> I love that story. I'm always going to remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I told this beautiful story about my piano teacher. George told the puke story in return. So, <laughs> Anyways, I love thanks, it. thanks everyone for listening. Thanks, Lisa, Shauna, for being on.